Hey mate. So above all, one of the biggest questions that I get asked is around the topic of addiction. And there's a lot of conflation, I suppose, with what we think addiction is. But essentially addiction is a dependency. It's something where you feel like you're probably unable to uh, behave, um, exist, live, even if it's that bad, or just get through um, your day to day without having to rely on this substance, this behavior, this this person, this, um, you know, fill in the gaps. So essentially what we want to talk about when it comes to addiction is how we can no longer have to rely on that. So we, ha we, actually, we actually have to think about living a different lifestyle. People wish they didn't do things all the time, okay? But they're not necessarily addictions. So every now and then people will eat foods they think are probably not the best for them or they, they know they're not the best for them. Um, they'll watch porn and porn is actually going to be the focus of today's video. Um, but it doesn't necessarily impede on their sense of self or, or their life. It's not as though they're watching porn or eating that bad food all day, every day. It's not that bad. But if it is still something that they don't want to be using or eating, for example, then there are still ways around it, okay? The first thing you want to think about when it comes to addiction is not shaming your behavior, okay? Because addiction arises when we don't have a whole lot of positive emotion within at that given time or within our lives in general. And our minds, we have this incentive reward system and it craves positive emotion whenever it can to keep us going in life, to keep it so that we are able to, to live on, okay? Because confidence is actually a very evolutionarily important um, character trait. We don't need to get into that. Essentially, when it comes to addiction, okay? So you're flat, you're bored, you want some positive emotion, okay? So very easily, fatty foods, porn, having a conversation that you deem to be, you know, involved with, that sort of stuff becomes very, very, it's almost like an urge feeling that fires up from the belly. And it gets very difficult to be able to stop that, even though you know what you feel like on the other side of completing it, eating the food, watching the porn and finishing, all that sort of stuff. So you don't want to shame the behavior because shame will bring about a negative sense of emotion. It'll make you feel worse, and then that addiction will become more alluring to you. So you'll feel worse, and the addiction is like, oh my God, it's 10 times more, this urge is 10 times more addictive than it previously was. So what we want to do is actually instill positive emotion from the bottom up, so that we don't actually feel like we have to watch the porn or we don't have to feel like we have to eat the food in the fridge because we feel so fulfilled in our life anyway, okay? And we want that state chronically. So some ways to go about that. Number one, you have to know your triggers. You have to know when porn addiction, and I did say previously that the porn is gonna be the topic of this video. You have to know when porn is more desirable for you when it is, okay? So boredom is a big one for people. Or when there's no one else in the house, that's a big one for people too. Um, some examples are, I mean, some people watch porn to celebrate, okay? So you have to know your triggers, especially because it's something that you don't want to do. You have to remind yourself that constantly, okay? Sure, you may not be addicted to heroin, but porn, isn't something that you want to not necessarily rely on, but just watch altogether, okay? Like eating fatty foods. And if your target or your aim is to get to the level where you're not watching porn at all, you have to be very diligent about that, okay? So you have to constantly remind yourself, no, this is who I am, this is what I stand for, this place and this person that doesn't watch porn and hasn't for years is the person that I want to be, okay? If that is the case, instill more positive emotion into your life, this is where purpose comes in comes into the into the picture. Okay, so living a life of purpose where you feel like your life has meaning and you're actually achieving things, you're seeing progress in the work that you do, that'll make you feel good enough so that you won't need to latch on to things that feel good temporarily. Okay, you'll have this chronic state of feel good 
hormones rushing through your body, okay? It'd be like an incredible chemical cocktail. So that's the first thing. The second thing, as we mentioned previously, is knowing your triggers, knowing when you are vulnerable to giving in to those addictions, okay? So like I said, boredom, when no one else is around, celebratory manifestations. If you are aware of your triggers, you'll be able to prepare for them earlier so that you won't fall into the whims of that addictive cycle and that behavior. So, you know, for example, that you finished work, okay? You're on your way home, you're stressed after a big day, no one is going to be home, what should you do? One thing you could do is call a friend up and meet them outside. So you can go for a beer or something, okay? Because that way you'll know that you've removed the potential for you to be able to carry out, for you to eat that food in the fridge, for you to watch the porn, okay? So knowing your triggers is going to help you prepare for them, okay? The next thing you want to do is build a framework around how you can get from point A, watching the porn, to point B, no longer watching the porn. So reverse engineering that process is what creating a life of purpose is all about. So the way you do that, your life, not watching porn, what would that life be like? What kind of person would you be, okay? Would you be someone who works a nine to five job? That's fine if you do. Would you be someone who is active, who eats healthily, who's engaged in a relationship, who is fulfilled from the day-to-day -day life, who is less bored than they currently are? If that's the kind of person that doesn't watch porn, we reverse engineer it so we know where you're at, we know where you want to be. Now we need to start building the steps so that you can become that person, okay? If you're bored 10% of the time living that life of not watching porn, currently at point A, you're bored 60% of the time. How can we reduce the amount of boredom in your life? What other fulfilling activities can we push into it so that boredom as a trigger is no longer as much of a big deal. It's not as significant. It's not gonna trigger you all the time, okay? Or at least 50% more of the time so that you won't always feel like you're constantly fighting this urge to watch porn all the time. So there's two ways we can go about it, okay? So the bottom up is instilling more positive emotion into your life getting that fulfillment on track, okay? Removing the shame. You're not a bad person for doing it. We just need to get more positive emotion into your life. The second thing is reverse engineering a plan to get you from point A, watching the porn, to point B, no longer watching the porn. And you have to literally envision, you have to conceptualize what your life would be like and the kind of person you would be if you were living that life, if you were, if you were the person that no longer watches porn. Who would you be? What kind of person, what kind of life would you have, okay? That, I think, are the best methods to get you from relying on this addictive behavior to no longer relying on it. Or at the very least, having the ability to consciously decide whether or not you want to do it or whether or not you don't want to do it at any given point in time, okay? So I really hope that helps. Thanks for watching.